Hello everyone, in this video I want to show you how to set up a S3 trigger that's going to fire a Lambda function in response to a file getting uploaded into our S3 bucket. So I'm going to walk you through all the steps one by one to show you how to get this set up through the console. So here I am in Amazon S3 and I have a bucket here called BBD S3 trigger demo. And this is going to be the bucket that I'm going to upload my file into that's going to trigger our Lambda function. And if I click on that, you can see there's absolutely nothing in here, no objects, no files. Um, so this is purely starting from scratch. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into the Lambda section of the console and create our function. So I have a tab open for that uh, just in the Lambda section here. And what we're going to do is go to the top right where it says create function. So we're going to author it from scratch and we're going to call this, um, I don't know, BBD S3 trigger demo. And we're going to do this in Python 3.9, but the same concepts apply here if you're doing this in something like Node.js or Java or any other programming language. Then we also need a permission set to modify slightly. Now, the way I want to set this up is that when our Lambda function gets triggered with the file update notification or the file creation notification, I want to call back into S3 and go and retrieve that file and then maybe save it somewhere or just process the data or something. Now, for that reason, I need the S3 get object IAM permission in order to access that S3 file. So you can either create a IAM role and attach it to your function here, or you can use one of the pre-created template ones like I'm going to do that has the S3 read-only access permissions that we need for this exercise. So we're going to go to change default execution role. I'm going to go to create a new role from an AWS policy template. And then just name this role, whatever you want. So S3 tr trigger demo role. And then in the policy template section, you're going to just click on that. And then in the top, you can just type in S3 and you can see here, Amazon S3 object read only permissions. We're going to click on this one and this is going to attach that get object IAM permission to a role that Lambda creates for us when we create our function here. So we don't need any other uh, settings. We don't need anything else in advance. You can go ahead and click on create function now. Now this may take a moment or so just because it needs to create the function and the IEM role that we need as well. So just be patient with it a little bit. Uh, while that's loading up, I wanna show you the event that we're gonna have to handle in our code. Um, so I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna come back here in a sec, but let me just show you the event really quick. So as, as you know, when you have a handler function, there's an event that gets passed in. This is gonna contain some important metadata that we need to call back into S3 with. So here's an example of what an event looks like that we're gonna need to handle. So you can see here, it's in JSON format and within the records key, there's a list here. So remember the first entry of this records key is what we're interested in. Now, what we're looking for is the S3 bucket name and the S3 uh, file name or the S3 key. So if you look inside records, first entry inside of S3 and then bucket and then name, there's the name of a particular bucket, not the one that we're going to be using, but you can easily swap this out with yours. And then you can see in the object section, also within S3, there's a key name here called vehicles.csv. This is the file that I'm going to be uploading. It's just a CSV file that contains the price and year and make of a certain number of cars. And we're going to process that file in this exercise. So this is the object that you need to extract all of those uh, important fields from. In our case, we just care about the bucket name and the object key. So just park that, we're gonna come back to it really quick. I'm going back to my other tab. And before we write the code to handle all that, I first want to go ahead and create the trigger that will invoke our Lambda function every time a file gets uploaded or modified. So we're gonna to go to add trigger here and we're gonna click on select a trigger. We're gonna type S3 to filter down to S3. By the way, you can also do this from the inverse perspective. You can do this from the S3 section of the console and select your Lambda function, but I'm just doing it this way because I find it's much, much easier. So it's asking us to select the bucket. So ours was BBD S3 trigger demo. Uh, it's asking you which event type are you interested in? So we care about post events here. One small thing, if you're going to be uploading your files to S3 through the SDK or through the AWS console, you're going to want to use put, not post. I realized this a little bit later and had to come back and modify it. And in this section, well, these two sections, which are, which are optional, you can basically set it up so that your function will only get invoked 
if files get uploaded to a certain subfolder within your bucket. So if you have like a deeply nested structure and you only want files in a certain directory to invoke your function, you can define the path here and it'll respect that. And another way to limit which files trigger a notification or trigger an invocation is based on the suffix or the file type. So if you have, you know, I'm doing a CSV here, so maybe I would want to do .csv or if you're doing .json or, you know, uh, image files that you want to listen for, then you can specify that here. It's completely optional. These two things are just basically for you to help filter down your events so you only trigger your Lambda for what you're actually interested in. Okay, so scrolling down to the bottom, this is kind of an important thing and I'm glad that they put a uh, warning kind of thing here. So what this thing is telling you is that if your function writes to an S3 object, ensure that you're using a different S3 object for input and output. Writing to the same bucket increase, increases the risk of creating a recursive invocation, which can result in increased Lambda usage and increased costs. So what this effectively means is since we are triggering our S3 file to invoke our Lambda function, if we happen to maybe process that data and then insert a new file back into that same S3 bucket, you can see how we would create a circular loop here or a recursive invocation. So that is obviously very bad if you're paying by the number of invocations as we are on AWS. So this thing is basically telling you to not do that. If you want to process that data from a bucket, you need to save that data into a different bucket that is not going to uh, invoke that same Lambda function. So just keep that in mind. I'm glad they have a little bit of a warning here for you to acknowledge. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the uh, I acknowledge button here and go click on add. Uh, this should be successful. Yep, you can see it was successful up here. And now we have a S3 trigger. And if you click on that, you can see the details of the trigger, the name of the, the bucket that it's attached to, and then um, what the path is or the, the bucket name and the event type and the notification name as well. All right, so now we are ready to go ahead and modify our code. So let's go to the code section. Now, I have already pre-written the code, so I'm just going to drop in a couple things here and explain this to you as we go along. So let's just take out this boilerplate stuff. Uh, so we need to import some dependencies and create our S3 client. So that's the first thing. So we're importing the JSON library, the Bodo3 library to call back into S3, the CSV library to uh, process our CSV file, and the IO library to handle input output as we read from our S3 response. And then down here, we're instantiating an S3 client variable, and that is going to be a Bodo3 client for S3. So this is what we're going to be using to call uh, our get object API with our bucket. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to extract the bucket name and the key name or the file name from the incoming event that's passed off into this Lambda function. So that's the first step. So let me drop this in here and explain this to you. By the way, I'll make this code available on GitHub if any of you are interested in uh, just copying it from there and not copying it out of the video. So the first thing we need to do is extract the bucket name and the key name. So these two are very similar. They're kind of doing the same thing. So they're looking inside the event that just got passed in, inside the first record, and then we're accessing the S3 section, which contains the bucket and the name. This is going to give you the name of the bucket. So whatever uh, value that is, the bucket variable will now be assigned to it. And similarly for key, we're also inside of S3 in this event, but we're getting the object and the key. So now the key is assigned uh, to the key variable here. And then you're just printing out what the bucket and key are. This is just a good reference to make sure everything is set up as we expect. Now our next step is to go ahead and get the object from S3 so that we can process it. So just dropping this code in, very straightforward stuff. Um, so this is, we're assigning the result to response and we're saying S3 client dot get objects. We're using that get object API. In the bucket field name, we're passing in the bucket name from up here. And in the key field name, we're passing in the key name from up here as well. Uh, so this response, like this line is going to trigger the get object API. Now we need to process the data that comes out of that response. So that's where the next code comes in. Now, since this is a CSV file, the um, processing is, you know, it's custom to CSV. But if you're doing this with, I don't know, an image file or maybe a JSON or a text file or something like that, it'll probably look slightly different, but it'll be the same concept. So the first thing we need to do is we need to extract the actual content out of the body out of the response and then read that content and decode it into UTF-8. 
Then we need to create a reader using the CSV reader library. And we're using the IO library to parse the string data from the data that we just extracted from the previous step. Um, so basically all the, the data after it's decoded gets put into here. We're reading that information and we're also passing it into a CSV reader. Next, we're just skipping over the header, which contains the uh, column names. In my case, I think it's like price, um, vehicle type, some other stuff. And then we're saying for every row left in the reader, we're going to print out the year, mileage, and price, where the row's first entry is going to be the year, which is index zero. The second entry, which is index one, will be the mileage. And the third entry, which is index two, will be the price. So this is just going to print out all of the records that exist in the file and just out to console so that you can take a look. So you can go ahead and click on deploy now, make sure you do that or this will not save. By the way, if you want to generate a test event really easily that looks like, you know, what is going to be passed in in real life, you can do it in two ways. You can just go print and event. And now you can take a look at the event whenever you this uh, function gets invoked. Uh, you can also do this manually through the testing section. If you go to configure test event and then for event name, whatever you want. And then if you go to uh, the template S3 and S3 put, you can see this is a very similar, if not exact format. Uh, yeah, so S3 bucket and name. So the same format that I showed you in the beginning of this video. So that's a way that you can get a copy of the test event that gets passed into your Lambda function. So from this point, we're pretty much good to go. I'm going to go back to my S3 bucket over here and I'm going to upload that file, that vehicles.csv file. I'm going to click on add files now and select the file. All right, so vehicles.csv is loaded. We're going to go to the bottom now and just click on upload to upload that into S3. And after a brief moment, you can see, well, you can see at the top, upload succeeded. You can also see vehicles.csv is here now. Um, and go to the top, click on close. Now we're in the real bucket. You can see it is indeed there and it just got uploaded. So now let's go and check out our Lambda function. Back in the Lambda tab, we're going to go to monitor. And I'm going to look at CloudWatch metrics first, but sometimes, yeah, the, the information may not show right away because I think it only collects data points at like one or five minute intervals. But in order to see that our function got invoked, we can instead go into view logs in CloudWatch. And so you can see here we have a log stream that's available to us. We could just click on that log stream. And as you can see here, if I just zoom in a little bit, you can see that we have the request with the year, the mileage, and the price of each of those uh, different entries that were in our CSV file. So I hope this helped you get set up with S3 triggers and Lambda. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.